What does it take to become an Olympic gold medalist rower? I don't know, but she does, and together we'll find out. Did you know what you eat affects how you think? Morgan meets a nutritional psychologist and has a mindful meal. It's salmon. Have you ever seen Miami like this? I'm Hunter Frankie, and we're riding the big bus down Ocean Drive today on SoFlo Health. Hello and welcome to SoFlo Health. I'm Hunter Frankie and tis the season, the season to invite all of your friends and family from up north where it's cold and uncomfortable to right here in sunny South Florida. But if only there was a way that we could get a guided tour or something like that around South Florida. Good morning. Yeah, hey, good welcome, morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, what's this here? I got my map. And you have your headset. My headphones. And this is the big bus. And this is the big bus that we're riding today. And hop on and hop off. Hop on and hop Every off. 30 minutes, there's another bus right behind you. What do you say we get on there? Come on in. Let's welcome, do it. Welcome, welcome. Come on. All right. Well, I'm going to find a seat and we'll get moving. I'm here at Miami Beach Rowing Club hoping to find somebody that could teach me a little bit about rowing. I think I can help. Oh, I think so. Lindsay Shoup, tell me about what you're wearing right now. <laughs> so these are World Championships medals, right? So uh -huh. I've won three World Championships. Wow. Uh, medaled at five World Cups. But this one here, Olympic gold medal. That's awesome. So tell me uh, about your journey rowing. What got you into rowing? I actually bumped into the rowing coach at the University of Virginia when I was 20 years old, randomly on campus. And he suggested, hey, you're tall, you look athletic, why don't you give this a try? <laughs> so that's where it started. But if you asked him today, he would say that I wasn't very good when it all started. <laughs> well, I'd say you're pretty good now. Do you think you could show me a little bit about rowing? Sure can, and we actually have a boat out here so that you can see what it's all about. Let's go check it out. Yeah. So this looks like a boat. <laughs> this is a boat, and it has shoes in it. And why are the shoes already locked in there? So the shoes are already in there because when you're gonna go race, you wanna make sure that your feet can stay attached. That's what you're gonna be pushing off of. A lot of people think that this is an arm sport, and they're right. rowing, you know, but it's a predominantly leg sport. And so you're gonna be on a seat that's on wheels. It's in the tracks. You can obviously right. see these are tracks. So it's much like the ones you see in a gym. Similar, okay. except the difference in the gym is that the machine is still and you're moving. Whereas in this, you almost wanna think of it as if you're kind of still, uh -huh. and the boat moves, and then you go with it, Oh, right? Okay. So then you have your rigger here, which is where these are oar locks. Right. That's where the oars are actually gonna go in. This feels very light. Am I correct in saying that? It is, it only weighs about 30 pounds, give or take. The longer and skinnier it is, it's probably gonna be a little bit faster. Now, I'm kind of long and skinny. Does that mean I'm gonna be good at the sport? <laughs> it does help. You wanna have long legs and long arms, so longer levers, it's all physics. I'm on my way. Let's hit the water. So let's go inside, because we have a few steps that we need to teach you before we get on the water. All right. <laughs> now we've seen these in CrossFit gyms, but I get the feeling that this is nothing like that. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit different than the CrossFit because the aim in CrossFit is to get the best number, which right. if you row well and get more fit, which this will definitely help you do before you get out on the water, yeah. uh, then you'll have a better number and you'll stay healthy a lot longer doing it. The first thing that you want to do is you're going to sit down on the actual rowing machine. And then what you're going to do is you're going to stretch your arms away. Okay. Stretch arms away. Back and then all you're the gonna, way up. Yep, yep. And then that's basically your catch position. You can relax a little bit here. Almost push this part of your back into my hand a little bit. Yeah, just your legs first, legs, legs, legs. Now follow through a little bit and don't worry about pulling all the way in. Keep about a basketball space. Oh, okay. Right, because if you pull all the way in, you're gonna, everything's yeah. gonna come up. That's right? what I've always done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so just relax okay, in front so right of you because you don't want to shift your shoulders up. Okay. So now make sure these stay relaxed. Okay. And then stretch the arms away, don't move Stretch the yet. arms away. Yep, shift your body just a little bit and then let the knees, there you go, knees break, long push. Go ahead and push, 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 as long as you can, little body, relax in front and re relax and think of it as a, like a, I mean, there's a fling kind of concept. Right. Well, I feel pretty good, but I really want to get on the water. So can we do that now? There's one more thing that we can do first before we get out on the water because the boat, a little tippier than the ground. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> let's get out there. Later, I finally make it to the water. Until then, it's back to the big bus. This is the best place to start our trip aboard the Big Bus Miami. And this right here is Ramon, who you saw earlier. He is our tour guide for today. So Ramon, tell us, how does the Big Bus work? Well, Big Bus, we start here from 9.30 in the morning. Every 30 minutes, there's another bus right behind me. Yeah. This is stop number one, the red line, the famous and the only Lincoln Road Mall. From here, 
you can go all the way to Wynwood, Trinity Cathedral, and then go back to Bayside. And you can hop on, you can hop off. You can hop off, and you hop on any of my stops, and every 30 minutes, there's another bus right behind me. So if you don't, if you need to come back to Miami Beach, yeah. the last one, five o'clock in the evening. Right. If you need to go back to Little Havana, the last one from Bayside, 445. Little Havana tour will take 40 minutes. Yeah. The Red Line tour, Miami Beach, an hour and 55 minutes. So you can see the entire Miami Beach. You can go to the beach, you can go to Lincoln Road Mall. That's how we both work. All right, I'm ready to go. You ready to hit the beach? Let's go, Let's sir. hit the beach. The big bus is headed to Ocean Drive. I finally make it on the water with Olympian Lindsay Shoup and Morgan connects Salmon with Sanity after the break. Focusing on you, innovations in modern medicine from your team of experts at U Health, the University of Miami Health System. There's a magnet under my scalp and it sticks to my scalp with the magnet. The middle ear implant Danielle Branciforte received years ago as part of a study at University of Miami Health System has transformed her life in ways she couldn't have imagined. I said to my husband, what is that sound I'm hearing? And it was the rain on the roof and I'd never heard that before. And so the two of us just started bawling like babies. This device can be life changing for the millions of people with disabling hearing loss who can't be helped by traditional hearing aids. So the middle ear implant allows us to bypass the external ear and directly couple to the middle ear very close to the hearing organ itself. This is what picks up the sound and sends it using an electrical signal through that magnetic coupling. Oh, it's made a, a huge difference in my ability to be able to converse with people more comfortably. Dr. Hillary Snap says UHealth Ear Institute is one of just a few sites in Florida to offer middle ear implants for patients with severe hearing loss. So being able to provide new technology and innovative technology to manage hearing loss is really important and a critical aspect of hearing health care as a whole. We're very proud to be part of that market. And here we are on the very famous Ocean Drive where you can people watch by day, you can party by night, and feel like a character out of one of your favorite movies or TV shows because so many have been shot right here. Now this is probably the best way to see South Beach on top of the big bus, having a lot of fun taking in the fresh air, and of course it's nice and cool this time of year, well, cooler. And the beautiful South Beach is right there. I'm going to sit down and take it all in and you watch this. Okay. I'm almost on the water. We're next to the water. So what is this? This is a dock so. master. Uh huh. So I just sit on down? Yep, go ahead and have a seat. So go ahead and put your feet in. Okay. Yep. You can grab the oar. So you go outside hand, goes to the outside of the shaft, right? Here. So you'll go arms away, just like we did on the, okay. on the rowing machine. So arms away. Yep, and then compress. So compress means legs bending, yep, up to the catch. Oh, Square yeah. it up, yep. And you can stay on what's called the square, where the blade will actually enter the water and be able to push. You want to make sure that you're pushing long, long, long. Outside arm hangs long, long, long. Then you can follow through with everything else. I'm feeling pretty comfortable so far. Can I get in the water now? We sure can. We have a, 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 a single over there for you that's a little bit wider, so uh -huh. it'll help you with the balance, but you'll get a feel for it. It's like right. two hopefully, oars, though. Hopefully I don't take a bath, but here we go. <laughs> First thing you want to do is you want the handles to okay. be together. Pull the boat toward the dock. Okay. Take this one, and we'll go oar across the same way that you did on the dock. Right foot is going to step right there between the tracks. Now you can put your hand here, you can put on the oar, you can put on the side of the boat. Okay. You're going to lower yourself down and uh -huh. sit on the seat. And you remember square and feather when we were on yes, the dock master? Yes. So this is square. Yep. This is feather? Right. Yep. You're creating like a mitten. You almost want your thumb and your index finger to touch. Okay. So now you have two mittens. When do you want the blade square? I want the blade square. Before it goes before in the water? Before it goes in the water. In the water, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And so then when do you want it feathered? When I'm either, I guess when I'm idle or when I'm out, when it's out of the water. Yep. So square, I'd pull in and then I'd come up at the end. Yes. As exactly. I bring it out. Exactly. Then I bring it back, square, and put it back in the water. Exactly. Exactly. Got it. So I'm pushing, pulling yes, away here. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. And then your right hand on there. Yep. And then I gotta push this. There you go. And then just keep your hand close to it the whole time. I gotta put it on go. here. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Now with your left hand, now you can take a stroke. How'd it go? 
I did it! I feel good. Uh, it was definitely challenging, and it's one of those things you're like, oh, okay, I think I got it. And then as soon as you think you got it, you, you know you don't. Well, and uh, that's part of it, right? You learn yeah. what you don't want to do, and then you're yes. like, okay, that's one step closer to what you do want to do. Yes. You made that look easy. And then take your away side, yep, pull it across. Look at this. Yeah. I'm definitely not an Olympic gold medalist yet, but Lindsay Shoup sure is. Thank you so much for teaching You're me welcome. the ropes. Thank you to Miami Beach Rowing Club for having us out here today, and Eduardo, our launch captain. And I'm gonna go get something to eat because I've worked up quite the sweat. Bye, Lindsay. <laughs> uh, what about this? Now forget it. This is part it's of fine. it. The washing, nope. the putting away. This has to be one of the best ways to see Miami. I've only been on the big bus for a little while now, but it's literally a whole new perspective. There's places that I've seen my whole life that when we drive by, I'm like, huh, I didn't realize that was there. It, just, it looks cooler, it feels great, and the beautiful weather outside makes it 10 times better. So I'm gonna keep riding along, and you watch this. This is the operating room inside Broward Health Imperial Point, and fortunately for everyone's sake, I'm not here to do surgery. I'm here to meet with Dr. Levine and one of his patients, Christopher, to talk about hernias. This is Dr. Levine, a general surgeon, and today we're here to talk about hernias. Doctor, what is a hernia? A hernia is basically a rip in your sidewall. Oof, that sounds painful. Where the muscle splits, and it can be painful. And how would somebody know if they have a hernia? Uh, most of the time they come to me complaining that they have a bulge, either in the groin or in the belly button or somewhere else in their abdominal wall. Uh, they might have some pins and needles, right? Uh, and that's usually indicative of a hernia. So if they're experiencing those symptoms, then they should come and see you? They should see their primary care or come directly to see me. Doctor, later we're gonna talk to Christopher, one of your patients, right. tell me about his story. Well, he had a hernia, he's a tennis player, and identified that his game was being affected by this bulge in his groin. Mm -hmm. We talked about options of treatment, mm -hmm. basically that the rip in the sidewall doesn't fix itself and that it would, in a young man like him, need to be repaired. I was actually playing a tournament, felt something that felt weird, felt a little bubble there, and I pushed it back in and didn't think about it, and I continued playing my match, and then my wife was like, I think you probably have a hernia. Broward Health was awesome. It was quick, it was painless, everybody told me exactly what to do, and before I knew it, I was done. Actually, after I got the surgery, just swinging the racket, I was like, oh my god, I, I can step to the right. I can actually move. I would say go check out Broward Health. They're very friendly. They'll make you feel really comfortable, especially my doctor, Dr. Levine. It was perfect. They totally made me feel at home. In my practice, I don't use very much mesh. Mm -hmm. um, I use what I call God's mesh, a reconstruction of the abdominal wall using your natural muscle. We also are pioneers here in minimally invasive robotic approaches. There are surgeons on staff that will also repair hernias in that manner. What makes Broward Health different when it comes to um, hernias and handling surgeries like this? They're like the gold standard. You come in, you have it fixed, and you go home. And they treat myself, my staff, and my patients like gold. And uh, everyone loves it. Doctor, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Stay right there. When SoFlow Health returns, we're still on the big bus getting a tour of Miami. Plus, Morgan makes that mind-tummy connection we've been talking about. It's still salmon. Welcome back to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and I'm still on the big bus tour in Miami. Right here is Bayside. There's so much more to Miami than Miami Beach, which we locals know, but a lot of others don't. Of course, we're at the beautiful Bayside. American Airlines Arena is just over there, and the Intercontinental Hotel is to my left. And of course, a beautiful shot of the bay. I can't get enough of Miami. Let's keep going. Have you ever heard of a nutritional psychologist? I sure have it. I'm Morgan Shapiro for SoFlow Health, and today I'm here with Dr. Latal Pachon, a nutritional psychologist herself. So I've heard of a nutritionist, I've heard of a psychologist, but what is a nutritional psychologist? What I do is I combine the mind and the body. So how does your diet affect your mental health? Because it can really be used to treat depression and anxiety and all sorts of mental illnesses. Okay, so you're dealing with the psychology aspects of your clients, and you're also talking about the food, which brings me to what's in front of us. 
what are we doing right here? So today we're gonna start off making a salmon, a okay. really simple dish with okay. a little side of zucchini. And while that's in the oven, we're gonna put together a salad. Okay. So this is like a mix of herbs. Okay. Sprinkle that on top. Attention. Go ahead. All right. Cooking for me is very, like, eliminates a lot of stress. Very yes. therapeutic. Yes, is that something you talk about a lot with your clients? It actually is. Um, so I love to cook, but I'm a lazy cook. Okay. I don't have patience okay. when I cook. I like to make my meals extremely simple, which is what we're doing right now. Okay. So now why would a client of yours make this particular dish? Like when a client comes to see you, what's the first thing you do? You assess their mood and then you give them foods or? Nutritional psychology is just a tool that I incorporate into therapy. Okay. And the whole idea is to try to get to the root cause of mental health, which a lot of people don't realize, has to do with nutritional deficiencies or some sort of imbalance in their bodies. So the idea is if we have a healthy body, healthy brain, Good mood, healthy right. mood, healthy mental health. You talk a lot about like the mindfulness and the empowerment when it comes to cooking your food and taking charge of what you're putting into your body. Yes, I do. When we actually focus on the food, we appreciate it and we also, also like value ourselves more. That's what I talk about with my clients a lot. Is like how valuable is your health to you? Right. So yeah. we're gonna pop this in the oven. Okay. Um, for just a few minutes, honestly, okay. until it's right, cooked. Right, cooks pretty quick. Yeah, 10, 15 minutes. And then we can just put together a quick salad, honestly, whatever you like. And there you have it, about 20 minutes this took total, from prep to cooking time, as simple as can be. How does this really affect your gut and how does your gut really affect your mood and treat things like anxiety, depression? How is treating your gut really you're connected to yeah, your brain. Explain that to me. We now know that gut health is connected to almost every chronic illness, and depression and anxiety are considered chronic illnesses. We don't want to work against our biology. You know, that's why I, I try to focus on diet as much as possible initially with my clients because this is easy. We can fix this. It just makes you better equipped to deal with your own stuff, with life, with right. things that come up. Right, and it's something natural you can do. It's no pill, it's something you do every day is feel your exactly. body through nutrition. So I think that's so important. So what do you say we plate this up? Let's do it. You might recognize this street. It's the very famous Calle Ocho, where we recently had one of our episodes. So you can go back on SoFlowHealth.com and watch it if you missed it. Right here is Domino Park as we're passing by. We've got Aldo, our cameraman, up there in front shooting some video, as well as our very entertaining tour guide along with us. Now I'm gonna take in the sights and the sounds of Little Havana and you watch this. After a car accident or personal injury, what do you do when it comes to your health? Do you talk to your doctor first or your attorney? Well, the whole process can be stressful, but fortunately Ortho VIP is making it easier for you to navigate. This is Maria Feliciano of Ortho VIP, where we are today. Maria, what is Ortho VIP? So Ortho VIP is a medical facility that treats patients that have been involved in an accident, slip and fall, or workman's comp injury. And that can be a scary process. So when should somebody call Ortho VIP? You know, I think it's, it's up to the patient, depending on how soon they feel that they need to see someone. Someone may get in an accident and need treatment immediately. You may wait two or three days and not feel that you need treatment, so it's really based on the individual. What is the benefit to the patient for coming to Ortho VIP? The benefit to the patient is really making sure that we set them up with the specialist that's going to take care of their specific injury need. At times, patients aren't aware that there are orthopedics that specialize in different areas of the body, mm -hmm. whether it's your foot and ankle or your hand. We just make sure that we team you up with the right professional to make sure that you're treated for those personal injuries. This is neurosurgeon Dr. Pham. Dr. Pham, what are some common injuries that people experience after an accident? Well, typically they have a neck and back pain, mm -hmm. but sometimes they have a chest pain from the airbag injury, knee pain or shoulder pain. And why is it important for them to come here to Ortho VIP in that scenario? Because we have a multi-specialty specialist to handle all the trauma cases. We have myself, neurosurgeon, trauma surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, neurologist, podiatry, mm -hmm. and, um, and even a cosmetic surgeon. Why is it important to have a specialist looking at you versus somebody who's looking at the overall picture? Well, you have to, uh, you have to go to the right specialist to find out the right problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
if you go for general medical doctor, mm -hmm. the doctor may not know anything about the MRI study. Mm -hmm. That's why you need to go specialist. It's important to choose a doctor that's right to treat your personal injury. Right. Um, you also want to look to make sure that you have a board certified physician that is treating those injuries and has the expertise, expertise to do so. And we provide that at Ortho VIP. Do you have multiple locations? We do. We have the location we're in here today at Coral Gables and we also have a location in Broward. We make sure that we're able to take care of our patients throughout South Florida by also offering transportation. Because when you get the proper treatment for the with the proper professional, you get a better outcome. Absolutely. Welcome back to SoFlow Health. I'm Hunter Frankie, and this is Española Way. It was designed in the 1920s to mimic the Las Ramblas neighborhood in Barcelona, Spain. And it really does feel like a little piece of Europe still with yoga studios, cafes and restaurants and plenty to enjoy. And that's it for this week's episode of SoFlow Health. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to the Big Bus Miami for touring us around Miami, dropping us off and picking us back up. It was a whole lot of fun and it's something you can do during the holidays. Don't forget to check out local10.com where you can see drop off locations for new unwrapped toys that you can drop off and the big bus will pick them up with Christy Krueger, Louis Aguirre, Eric Yatsi, and JC Birch on Friday, December 13th, live on the news all day long. They'll be riding around South Florida just like we did, picking up toys to benefit Toys for Tots and what a great way to spend the holidays. As always, you can watch previous episodes of SoFlow Health on SoFlowHealth.com. You can follow us using at SoFlow Health to share with us what you're doing to stay healthy. And I'll see you next week. I want to get something to eat. Next week, you'll be sorry if you miss our healthy holiday special. Morgan Shapiro is sprucing up your health with tips on how to keep off the holiday pounds while I get to spend the most wonderful time of the year on the golf course. All of this and more next week on SoFlow Health.